Assalamu alaikum and good day. So in this lecture, we will discuss the cost of capital. Okay, so we have the cost of new common stock or what we call as the cost of external equity. So external equity because you need to issue this. No, and the external, it does not yet exist in the company. What we call as internal equity is the retained earnings. No? Okay, so um, companies generally use an investment banker and issuing new common stocks or sometimes preferred stocks or bonds, but this is at a fee. So we have what we call flotation costs. So these costs are incurred when it issues new securities. No? This includes expenses like underwriting fees, legal fees, and registration fees. So there are two approaches in accounting for flotation costs. So first, we add flotation costs to the project's cost. So in effect, this will reduce our expected rate of return of a project. So for example, we have, if we, if we did not include the flotation cost, we have initial cost of a one-year project, let's say 100 million, so expected inflow after a year, it will become 115 million. So our expected rate of return for this project would be 115 divided by 100 minus 1, and that would be 15%. If we include the flotation cost of 2 million, so the flotation cost of 2 million will be added to the cost, and that will be 102 million. So we divide 115 divided by 102, so it will become 12.75%. So as you can see, um, if we add flotation cost or project cost, um, our expected rate of return will be reduced. So another approach in accounting for flotation cost is to increase the cost of capital. So the issuing firm receives only a portion of the capital provided by investors and the remainder going to the underwriter. So example, we have flotation cost of 10%. We have the dividend expected, next expected dividend of 1.25 and the current stock price of 23.06 and expected growth rate of 8.3%. So again, we have, we have learned that there's a way to compute the stock price, and that would be from the constant growth dividend model. So our cost of equity from our new stock would be the expected dividend divided by the price net of flotation cost plus the growth rate. So we have um, the expected dividend of 1.25, our stock price, which is 23.06, multiplied by the net of flotation cost 0 0.90 plus 0 0.083. So we have cost of equity would be 14.3%. So we have what we call the flotation adjustment. No? The amount that must be added to the cost of equity in accounting for flotation cost to arrive at the um, new uh, external equity cost. So we have here the pure DCF cost. Okay, so we have 13.7%. Okay, so um, discounted cash flow is another way to compute the stock price. Okay, so we have flotation adjustment is equivalent to the adjusted DCF cost minus the pure DCF cost. So we have the adjusted cost as we computed a while ago, 14.3% minus 13.7%, so that 0.6% flotation adjustment. So now, in computing for the cost of our external equity, um, we have the um, RS, the cost of our um, retained earnings, plus the flotation adjustment. So this is also another way of computing the cost of external equity, and that is 13.5%, plus 0.6%, so we have 14.1%. Okay, so um, just for an additional review, for the cost of de debt that would be included in our cost of capital or in WAC, 
Um, usually, it is the yield to maturity of bonds. So, just for a review, so we have here a sample. 14-year, um, 10% annual coupon, 1,000 par value bond at a price of 1,494.93. So, here, the what is given here, the 10% is not the yield, but rather this is just the nominal coupon rate. Okay, so if we want to compare to get the cost of this bond, we need to get the yield to maturity. So the yield to maturity, as you can see, um, this is just the summation of all the discounted um, inflows. Okay, so generally for the value, the value of the bond, there are two inflows. First is the um, interest payments that the bond need to pay every period, either quarterly, semi-annually, or yearly. So that um, interest payment can be multiplied by the present value factor of annuity, okay, to get the discounted cash flows. Then another portion of the bond price is the discounted uh, maturity value that will be paid in a one-time basis. So that is the present value of the single payment of the maturity price, which is um, 1,000 at the end of the life of the bond. Okay, because at the end of the life of the bond, you will return the maturity value, no, the um, value of the par of the bond. Okay, so. Um, you need to discount all of that, but if you are using the financial calculator because uh, YPM is a very lengthy process, if you will do it in a trial and um, error method because you need to force balance the um, 1,494.93, the price of this bond, then you will um, try to get what is the discount rate that was used to get the overall 1,494.93 price of the bond. So there's a, for, um, a shortcut there, but if you are using financial calculator, so just set up, simply enter, no? Our N is 14, our present value is 1,494.93. Our PMT is 100, 100 that is taken by 1,000 times 10% nominal rate. And the FV of 1,000. Then press um, 1 over year key. So the answer will be 5%. Okay, so 5% is our YTM. So we also have here a manual computation for the YTM. Okay, so we have here the step 1. That is the rough estimate of the yield to maturity. And how can we get that? That is the interest. That's the annual um, coupon plus the difference between par minus market price divided by N. You divide that all together with the par plus market price divided by 2 or the average price. So as you can see here, um, this is just the rough estimate. So with the rough estimate of the YTM, you compute the bond price using the YTM. As what I've mentioned a while ago, the interest multiplied by the present value factor using that YTM from the rough estimate plus the maturity value multiplied by the present value interest factor single payment using the discount uh, rate, the YTM rate that you have uh, derived from the step one. Step three, we interpolate. Okay, so um, we interpolate. So if YTM the yield to maturity is less than the coupon, so it is premium, so we deduct, no? Okay, so we get the YTM here that is final. So this is for the manual approach. And this is also the same if you compute with um, YTM with your financial calculator. So we have here the cost of our preferred stock. So this is the component of preferred stock used to calculate the weighted average cost of capital. So, um, this is just the preferred dividend. Of course, preferred dividend, um, this is not anymore the expected dividend because this is the dividend that is based on the covenant and the preferred agreement. No, 
So it's the preferred dividend divided by the current price of the preferred dividend. So that is the component cost of preferred stock. Okay, so we have here the cost example of preferred stock. So Ally does not have any preferred stock outstanding, but the company plans to issue some in the future and therefore has included in its target capital structure. Allied would sell this stock to a few large hedge funds. The stock would have 10 pesos dividend per share and it would be priced at 97.5%. So therefore, our cost of preferred stock would be just simply dividend per share of 10 divided by 97.5 preferred stock price. So our cost would be 10.3%. So this is our solution for the preferred stock computation. So now we have here the cost of retained earnings. Okay, so the rate of return required by stockholders on a firm's common stock. So um, the cost of new stock is um, differentiated here because the cost of com new common stock will be based on the cost of retained earnings but increased for flotation cost the um, two approaches that I have mentioned a while ago. So we have here the um, most common method for estimating the cost of common equity and that is the cap M or the capital asset pricing model. So step one, we estimate the risk free. So usually we use the Treasury securities rate as the measure of the risk-free rate. So this risk-free rate is usually given in the problem. So we have step two, we estimate the stock's beta coefficient, okay? Uh, and we will use it as an index of the stock's risk. Step three, we estimate the expected market risk premium. So this is the difference between the return that investors require on the average stock and the risk free rate. And finally, finally, we have step four, we substitute the preceding values in the cap M equation to estimate the required rate of return on the stock. So um, that would be risk free rate plus the product of the risk premium multiplied by the beta. So there's also another way of computing um, another method, but it will give another uh, different answer um, in computing for the cost of equity. So it depends on the problem on what method will be used by the company. So we have what we call here the bond yield plus risk premium approach. So the cost of equity would be the bond yield the yield of the bond, the YTM, yield to maturity of the bond, plus the risk premium. We also have another model, and that is what we call the DCF, the discounted cash flow approach, or the dividend yield plus growth rate approach. So this is what is commonly um, applied. We have the expected dividend um, divided by the price plus the expected growth, or we can have the expected dividend divided by um, the percentage, the return on um, equity minus the um, growth. And that is to compute for the price you know, by just interpolating the variables. So we also have another approach, and that is averaging the alternative estimates. So we have, as what we have discussed, three methods of determining the cost of equity. So in this method, it will just get the average. The average between the average of the cap M plus the bond yield plus risk premium method plus the DCF method. So we divide that by three, and that would be the cost of equity. Okay, so now we have what we call the retained earnings breakpoint. So what is the retained earnings breakpoint? So this is the amount of capital that is raised beyond which new common stock must be issued. So ibig sabihin, if we reach this point, then in order to finance the capital projects, we need to issue new equity. Okay, so our formula would be Additions to retain earnings for the year divided by the equity fraction in the capital mix. 
So let's have here an example. No? So if a company's retained earnings is expected to be 66 million and its target capital structure consists of 45% debt, 2% preferred stock, and 53% equity. So what will be our retained earnings breakpoint? So our retained earnings breakpoint would be the 66 million, the expected addition to retained earnings, divided by its um, fraction or weight in the capital mix, and that is 0 0.53. So we have 124.5 million. Okay, so if we check, so again, 124.5 million is only the extent to which that it can finance capital projects without the need to issue new equity. So let's check. So for example, we have 124.5 million. So we have 45% is to from debt. So we have 56 million, 2% for preferred stock, and that's 2.5 million. And we have 53% for common stock, and that is true 66 million. Now we have what we call the WAC or the weighted average cost of capital. This is called weighted because you will just multiply the cost of each capital to its weight in the capital structure. Okay, so like here, when we compute with the debt, so the weight of the debt multiplied by the after-tax cost of the debt plus the weight of the preferred stock multiplied by its uh, cost of preferred stock then plus another weight of the um, <coughs> equity multiplied by its cost of equity. So let's have a sample problem here. So firm A has the following data. The target capital structure is 46% of debt. 3% of preferred, and 51% of common equity. We have our tax rate of 40%. Cost of debt is 7.5%. Cost of equity is 11.5%. And cost of new equity will be 12.5%. So let's find the firm's walk if it does not issue any stock and if it does. So we have here um, for the computation for letter A, assuming that we do not issue new equity. So just multiply the weight of the debt multiplied by the after-tax cost. So the weight, the cost of debt is 7%, tax rate is 40%, so we have after-tax of 60%. So multiply that with 46%. So this is the portion of the debt in the cost of capital. Then we have the preferred shares. 3% multiplied by the cost of preferred, 7.5%. So this is the weighted cost of preferred. Plus the 51% weight of retained earnings. No, um, The assumption is we do not issue common stock. So the cost of the retained earnings will be added to the equity. Okay, So we have 8.02%. So if we issue new equity, the cost of new equity would be 12.5%. Okay, so and this is the cost of the new equity. So again, remember new equity because we are looking at the financing here. We do not use the existing cost of the equity because it's already existing. Okay, what we are looking for is the cost if we secure additional capital. So that is the cost of new equity and that is 12.5%. So we multiply that. So we have 8.53%. So as you can see, um, our WAC is lower when we are to utilize only our retained earnings because you do not need to issue retained earnings anymore. You do not need to incur flotation costs for the legal fees, underwriting fees, so on and so forth. So that what makes um, new equity costly, if not the most expensive um, source of capital. <laughs>